objects as output in PowerShell. Hi, I'm Don Jones, and the idea with PowerShell is really that it's an object-oriented shell, and if you're writing a script that produces text, well, you're, you're kind of missing the point. Your scripts and your functions should output objects as much as possible, and I'm going to show you how. One of the things you'll frequently have to do in a PowerShell script or a function is assemble information from multiple different sources into some kind of cohesive output. And let me show you how people usually tackle that their first go round. It's usually something like this. I've set up a script that has a parameter called computer name. Now, just for my own convenience, I've given it a default value of localhost. That way I can run this without having to type the computer name each time. I'm retrieving two pieces of information. Now really, this is just a good example. This could be 20 pieces of information, 50 pieces of information, doesn't really matter. I'm retrieving two WMI classes, operating system and computer system, from whatever computer was specified in the dollar sign computer name parameter. Now, so far, everything's good to go. Here's where folks tend to go wrong. Right host. Man, anytime you see right host, it's probably not the right idea, but here's what happens. Uh, we're starting by writing out a little header row, and I'm using backtick T, which you can do in double quotation marks to create a tab character. So we're kind of creating a little table of our own. In fact, we've put little lines under the, the table header row. And then for my data, I'm actually outputting the computer name and a tab, the caption property of the operating system and a tab, and then the total physical memory. Now again, you, you could make this as, as big and as complicated as you wanted to. The point is that this is not the way to do it. Here's what happens. You run this. Now, well, first of all, my alignment is not beautiful. So this is kind of horridly ugly. Here's the other problem. If you were to just run this, just run this script and pipe it to say out file, uh, and let's just save it as output.txt. Okay, I still got the information on the screen. Let's see what went into output.txt. Nothing. And that is one of the biggest problems with using write host. Write host prints things directly on the screen. It means I can only ever get this information on the screen. I can't ever get it in a, a text file, a CSV file. I can't do anything with it. What if I, I at one point, really wanted this as a list instead? So I'm going to run this and use one of PowerShell's formatting commands, format list, nothing. Because I'm outputting pure text to the screen, PowerShell is helpless to do any work for me. This is not the right way to do things. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna comment out this ugliness and we're gonna do it the right way. I'm gonna create a hash table that contains the output I want. And it's gonna be the form of output column name equals the value. And I can do, uh, because this ends in a semicolon, I can actually hit enter and I can make this kind of look pretty in my script. So we're going to use the same information here, OS caption. And this was system.total physical memory. By putting that into a hash table, I give myself an interesting new capability. Check this out. I'm going to create a new object and I'm going to use the specific type of object, PS object. And I'm going to load it with that hash table of properties. And then rather than using write host, I'm going to use write output to write that to the pipeline. Save it. And I'm just going to come right back into the shell and run that all by itself. Yeah, see, now it's a lot prettier. I mean, at least everything's lined up well. Let's pipe that to format table with an auto size parameter. Ah, that's actually quite beautiful. What if I really did want it as a list once or twice? No problem. PowerShell can do that. Hey, what about that, uh, that other need to uh, put that out to a text file? Type output.txt. Awesome. You see, by creating a custom object like this and by writing the output to the pipeline, I enable all of PowerShell's other capabilities. I could export this to a CSV file, convert it to an HTML file. I can do anything with it. If I need to expand this to contain more information, it's fine. 
I just add a call to retrieve whatever information I want, add that information to this hash table, and everything else is magic. Look, I'll show you. Let's, uh, let's add one more piece of information from the system. I'll put a semicolon, manufacturer equals system dot manufacturer. Done. I don't need to do anything else. It's easy to extend this and add information to it. And I can still do, go to a CSV, go to an HTML, do anything else. So this is absolutely the right way to produce output from your scripts and functions in PowerShell. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.